Hey guys, welcome back to the Starring Milana podcast. This is season four, episode three, and I hate everyone is the motto for this week. Um, I went to Utah and came back to, I would say, slight shit show of a life. I think this week really just tested me and Lena, my patience. Um, I feel slightly tortured. I can't really explain it. Um, but it's but it's fine because it's a new week and um, we'll be fine. Everything is fine. I'll be the chipper one today. Oh, that's nice. You're going to out chipper me? Yeah. Okay. All I'll right. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. That's a bold statement. You're going to make me laugh? Oh, sometimes I'm funny. I'm funny in like random moments. Yeah. <clears throat> really random moments. Okay, here we go. <laughs> people say people say I'm too serious, but then when I'm silly, I'm like really silly. Yeah, you have like a giggle attack or yeah. something and it's just like over. By the way, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, um I have a fake ponytail hair in my head. Um I'm experimenting. This is my second time wearing it. If you see my real hair under here, I did like a really sloppy job. Uh, Lena, if you see my real hair under here, no, it actually looks see. really good. Oh, I really thank like. You. Like, she is she a hairstylist? Like, she has a side part. There's like three sections to her scalp. You know, right you now. watch Nina do your hair a couple yeah. times, and you're like, I can do this. No, it looks good. And Thanks. Yeah. My mom already made a comment about yeah, my hair, she but did. I was you know, there. I knew she was gonna say that as I was doing it. She, my, um, I come down like whatever I'm eating, and she's like, my mom goes, "What is this hair? Are you sure about the part in your hair?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And you like the bottom? I'm talking about the actual hair. And I'm like, yeah, it's in my head. I clearly like it. And she's like, mm. I'm like, no one's asked you. She's like, it's in style. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I don't know in one country. I'm like, all right, lady. <laughs> like, bye. I'm done with you. She always has some shit to say. That's your friend. I was going to say, like someone else I know. Oh, I always some have some shit. To say. <laughs> Sometimes I say shit. I'm like a 50-50. Yeah, Sometimes Milana's I say mom shit. mom is my friend. Yeah, that's your friend. Yeah. Um, anyway, welcome, guys. Um, as If you're new here, we have three segments. The first one is BTS, where we recap my past week. The second one is called Talkworthy, where we pick a few things going on in the media, and we try to offer a new or different perspective. And the third segment is called Dropping Gems, where we pick a topic of the week, and we drop a few gems. And, of course, the lady you heard talking is my co-producer, Lena. Um, she's back there, and she just talks, chimes in, and is chipper every once in a while. Uh, and by the way, if you've been here since season one, like, do you remember when she didn't have a mic? And like, you can hear some like faint voice in the background, slightly saying something. And you're like, what is that echo? Or who is that? And I would have to repeat what she was saying. I was thinking about that today. We have grown. We now have yeah. two mics. I know. Milana got me a mic. Yeah, we've grown from that to a, a paper gift. backdrop that you hated. I hated to that. To me sitting sideways. Oh you know what? This is where like... Sometimes mean commentary can really like help you grow as a person. This person commented on my podcast was like, great content, but I can't watch this anymore because why are you sitting sideways and looking in the other direction? Oh, yeah, and I remember looking that in the comment. front. And I was like, because the, the video is not the primary like form of blah, blah, blah. I'm focused on my audio. And then I was like, why am I sitting sideways? I mean, I know because it's, it's like my better side. And also like I was looking at Lena in this direction. But like, yeah. Why didn't I just look forward, you know? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I can tell that you're looking at me, but it's, like, hard not to. I'm it's right, fine. I'm, I'm right behind the camera. It would also be weird if I just yeah. stared at the camera like this while there's somebody talking in this corner. I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, like, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, no, of course, be natural. No, but before I was like this, and I was just talking to I mean, I thought you were doing that for a different reason, though. What? Oh, fuck, What? What? Pre- pre-nose job. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, no, it wasn't because of that. It was just, it was my better side. You're but right. Do you feel like you have a better side now still? Um, I don't know because I just gave up on the sides. Like, I will take a picture of this one. I'm like, ooh, how do I look like that? And then I'll take one of this one. I'm like, ooh, I still look like that. And then I'm like, forward. And I'm like, ooh, girl, that's not it. I just gave up. I'm rolling my eyes at Milana. Whatever. It's like, people look, like, this is what she thinks. And then it's like, people probably look at her and be like, oh my God, she's an Armenian goddess. Oh, and that's then- so nice. But like, I'm not. But okay, thank you. Whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll be an Armenian goddess when somebody puts me in a calendar. <laughs> but no one's asking. So here we are. That's an inside uh, joke. Inside joke. Sorry, you didn't get it. Maybe next time. All right. So, yeah, let's get this party started. BTS, um, my, behind the scenes of my life. So I did go to Utah, like you guys heard in my previous podcast, um, my first time in Utah. I really liked it. Well, I was in Park City just like really close to Salt Lake City. I don't know what the rest of Utah is looking like, but I really liked it. I the food was great. Um it was kind of bare. There wasn't a lot of snow there. 
Um, and uh, what else happened? Oh, I was walking down Main Street and I saw Meredith, Meredith Mark's store. And that's a housewife of Salt Lake City. And I got really excited because I'm like, oh my God, this is one of the housewife stores. Like, how cool. Look at me. Anyway, um, what else happened? My sister and her friends, like, they have a high tolerance for alcohol. I'm going to put it that way. Um, I do not. So... I was forced to take shots, and for me, you know, I'm like more of a cocktail sipper, like a spicy marg with cucumber, jalapeno, and like tahini on the rim. Like, that's my jam. Um, and they were just throwing it back, and I'm like, damn, like, this is how the other side lives, you know? Um, but I handled it very well, but I actually had to move on to uh, dirty martinis, and I haven't had one in so long because I stopped drinking vodka, and it, they're so good. Lena, do you like dirty martinis? I don't. I hate vodka. You, know you can't this. taste it. Do you like I, olives? Do, well, uh, I don't. I like olives. I like the one that you had, the lychee martini at. Nobu. Oh yeah, well that one's like all like so sweet. I'm like a yeah, I dirty martinis like olive with olive juice. But can you taste the vodka? Not really. If they make it I'll right, it tastes it. like it just yeah. tastes like water and olive. That's juice. probably the only like vodka drink. I yeah, would ever no, no, drink. no. Yeah. I know. It's like I'm, I'm not. What, what? What are we gonna drink? A vodka co- cranberry? What are we in college? Oh no, I hate vodka. Do you remember? I think it's the most disgusting. I know why thing. you hate vodka. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Were you there? <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, yeah, but vaguely. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I it was w- vodka. Was it not vodka? No, it was vodka, and it was Smirnoff. Oh. And I, I felt like I was going to die. It you was, did die. Are I we mean, talking about the same thing? Yeah, yes oh. means, like, 21st yeah. birthday. Yeah, oh, yeah, you died. Yeah. Do you know was, what I did for that 21st birthday? You le- I don't, you left. I drank a bottle of Sky with Taylor. Ew. You drank Smirnoff. We downed. I'm like, how are we drinking a bottle of Sky Vodka right now? We downed the whole thing. That was the one and only time I've ever like gotten drunk and I threw up. And I hate, I have a fear of throwing up. It's like a f- straight up phobia. So I've Damn. never drank vodka after that ever again. And that was eight, almost, yeah, eight years ago. Yeah, that's what happened with me and tequila. The first, I never drank any alcohol. And the first time I got drunk was when I went camping after I graduated high school. And I downed like eight shots of 1800 because... No one taught me how to drink. This is another thing. Like, if I wanna, when I'm going to be a parent, I'm going to teach my kid how to drink. And I know it might sound crazy to some people. No, there's like the Smirnoff was the shittiest type of yes, vodka. Yes, not only the type, told me anything. but also like the mixing, but also like how you need to drink. No one told me that like you take a shot and you wait. Yeah, you, Like yeah. I was like, oh, I don't feel anything. People get drunk off of this. Oh, I don't feel anything. And the friends I was with, like we we're amateurs. Like nobody was drinking at the mm-hmm. time like that. So I took eight shots. Maybe in the span of like 14 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh my God. And I'm sitting there on like a, a log or something. And next thing you know, I f- collapsed to the side. Like that's how wasted I got because I had no idea. And I threw up so much and I was traumatized off tequila for no. years. I just oh, started drinking tequila. tequila. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was 1800. I just no, started I was, drinking tequila yeah, I, like a couple years ago. I just had to like close my eyes and I was like very... It wasn't like... Like you think the end is near. Like you think you're dead. Yeah. Like yeah. it wasn't like drunk in the way that you like like woozy drunk. It was like I was sick. Like I oh, was yeah. like throwing up and I just felt like dizzy and like I had to close my eyes. That's, like, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. It was bad. But like, yeah. After I threw up, I was better. Was oh, fine. well, the next day you're still not good. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, good. Yeah. But that never happened to me again because I don't, I don't really drink like that so yeah and so i'm like i'm a sipper like i prefer to sip but i like i'll do some wine i'll do like yeah that's sipping like a margarita but that's Mm -hmm. it yeah Yeah, those are the good things we're old now we're old yeah that was college that was college i was not 21 at the time (laughs) oh yeah i was 20 oh my god see playhouse man rest in peace you just you just drop a security guard at 20 and you're in no i had a fake id oh should i be saying this on a podcast who cares (laughs) Can they prove it? No, I actually don't know where it is. I might have shredded it. Wait, did you have it made or was it your sister's? No, I had it made. Oh, you were one of those girls. Yeah. You know, I never had one. No, yeah, I had one. I don't remember how I got it, though. That's interesting. It I never had one because we didn't go to clubs until, like, my 21st birthday, and I was a year older than all my friends because I started school late. Yeah. So they were the ones that had to, like, slide the security guard at 20 to get us to get in. I don't remember how I got it. Yeah. Everybody in college was, like, sending, was, like, getting these shady, like, fake IDs through yeah. some, like something like you mail someone something yeah. and then yeah i remember the system oh, it was weird yeah i can't believe i did that i'm embarrassed but myself. when they started scanning ids oh this was that before stopped. that yeah, yeah. Th- i mean was it before. got like rejected like a two like two times but like whoever i was with ended up just like i guess paying money and mm. it was like my girlfriends too it wasn't yeah. like guys huh. they were like because they knew the promoters and i was like i don't know about all this yeah exactly you just slide the 20 to the security that's like known in hollywood I don't think they do that anymore. What do you mean? 
You walk in with the promoter. You walk, a promoter walks in 20 girls, and he says, hey, these two are not 21. And um, the security, he points to them, so to, tells the security guard, get them in. The security guard goes, okay, and they just hand them a 20 with their ID. And he pretends he's looking at it, and he takes the 20. Mm, interesting. Oh, wow, I'm just, like, blowing up the spot. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> it's COVID. Yeah, Everyone I'm knows like, the system. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I would teach my kids how to drink because no one taught no, me how to drink and I got like wasted for no reason. And like a quick caveat though, I'd also, I had this conversation with one of my guy friends also, like he was talking about, he has a son, but we were talking about like, uh, growing up as like a female and like mm. when your parents didn't really talk to you about like dating or men or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was saying if he has a daughter, he's going to teach his daughter, like he's going to put her up on game. And I was like, I was like, oh, what do you mean by that? And he's like explaining and basically like, so like, I feel like when your parents don't teach you like how to date or what, how a man should treat you or how to, like what to expect from a man or a boyfriend or anyone you're dating or in a relationship, then you don't know like what to expect. Like if the topic is like in my family or my culture and my religion is very taboo, so they never talk about it. So I don't know like certain things that should be happening X, Y, and Z. So like if he was saying like, no, I'm going to tell her like, they need to do this, 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 or this 100%. is a red flag for this. But like when you don't talk about it, you don't get that. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. I was like, I'm going to do that too. Oh, like, I'm, I'm doing it all. Yeah. I already decided that I'm, I'm going to be very open with Me my too. kids yeah, yeah, because sure. you, first of all, you want to be open so that they feel that they can be comfortable and open with yeah. you. But also you don't like, why do, do we both need to go through some shit like that? Like yeah. I've already went through it. So let yeah. me put you up on game or maybe it's things that I know about that I haven't been through. Like, let me put you up on game. So, to both of us don't have to struggle in this like whatever the situation is like yeah sex we don't talk about sex in my culture it's like yeah figure it the fuck out like don't have sex to your marriage uh, okay okay so like that's not realistic so what are we gonna do about it now i had to figure it out on my own oh yeah. no i'm sorry my one semester of sex ed in ninth grade just did it for we me i now know that. everything yeah. uh, horrible like yeah, i don't remember bad. anything and people weren't really having sex in ninth grade so it was like a pointless class at the time like and it should have been longer should have like they should do something like senior year they should yes absolutely yeah. because people didn't really start in ninth grade some people did but most people were like you know maybe 11th and mm-hmm. it's like this it's i forgot what i studied in ninth grade and by the way it was literally like two months of school so uh, yeah. i mean that subject no, but that, that stuck with me and i was like yeah for sure yeah like, that's such a good piece of Everything. Advice. They're going to be little adults. They're going to be just knowledgeable in all the little things. And all the things. They're going to be... They're going to be at their f- friend's house telling their parents at the age of 16 how to take shots and how to have sex. No, I mean, like, they... Honestly, it's crazy now. Like, kids, like, the, like, music they're listening to, they're already Not exposed. even music, just social media. Yeah, and like, social media. We were exposed to music, and it was, like, really, like, raunchy shit at a young age, but... We weren't as exposed as people are now because of social media. Like, we see everything. You go on Twitter, and there's... I go on Twitter sometimes, and my timeline, people are retweeting, uh, like, porn. Yeah, I've seen that, too. Like, just banging, I've, yeah, someone I've getting head. <laughs> Your kids are on Twitter. Like, literally, all they have to do is log... They don't even have to type in Pornhub.com. Like, yeah. it's, like, not even a restricted site. Like, if your kids have Twitter, they can just see it. It's right there. Um, So, yeah, I mean we have to just teach them. We have to get ahead of the curve, you know, the curb. Is, mm-hmm. that, is that what Ahead it is? of the curve? Curb. <laughs> when you say curb, like parking? <laughs> it's okay. English is my third language. <laughs> what? Why is ahead of the curve? You know, like a curve, like a learning curve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much more sense than a curb. Yeah, I, I didn't know. really think about it until now. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, back to Utah. I I ended up snowboarding. She didn't listen to me. I she didn't listen to you, but let ski. me tell you something. Skiing was definitely easier. I can tell, uh, as I was there, and we should have taken a lesson. We didn't take a lesson. We went to the Kitty Slopes, and we were just like got on because my sister's like, "Oh yeah, I snowboarded before. I could tell you what to do." She didn't tell me shit because she she was falling on her ass and the first time I fell I didn't know how to get up because like your legs are strapped I'm like do you have to take this thing off every single time and um my sister's like no I'm like how do you get up she's like you just kind of push yourself up then I hear a guy in the background you have to flip over on your stomach and push yourself up so I'm over here like flipping me my board over on my stomach I mean it was a disaster but after a couple of tries I really got it um and but I did I was sitting there taking a break me and my friend Gracie were looking at people skiing we're like Skiing is so much easier. Like, we should have definitely done it. And then, mm-hmm. as we said it, 
this girl comes sliding down the kitty slopes from the top of the hill of the kitty slope. She is screaming at the top of her lungs towards us. She's like, I, how do you stop this thing? How do you stop? How do you stop? Like screaming, freaking you turn out. turn your skis inward. Well, everyone else do that and they tell you that but she just like when you're when you're falling you just don't know you know you're just like in the moment she's freaking out and she's going fast and she's like like her arms are like flailing up and down with the sticks with the sticks in her hand she was going so fast and she's like whatever and she was about she was coming towards me but she was also coming towards the end of the cliff like if she would have kept going she would have flown off the cliff this man who's i guess an instructor for the kids jumped in front of her and like stopped her and she fell because oh if he wouldn't have done that she would have flown off the cliff and wow. no, and everyone was watching there was like 50 people that watched nobody knew what to do because I mean, everyone's like a beginner i didn't know what to do i was yeah. my feet were stuck to my Board, snowboard yeah. and i was standing like oh she's gonna hit me or fly off the cliff it's like one or the other yeah um but when i noticed when people were falling with skis I didn't look like I didn't look like for me like I wanted to do that because there was too many con- like contraptions like there was too many <laughs> things like it was like one foot two foot one hand two hand it was like four things and if you are a beginner and you don't really know what you're doing you can get like twisted up in your own shit yeah. so a lot of the people that were falling or like having a hard time they were getting twisted up in their own things but for snowboarding like you just you just fall and your feet are stuck and you just take them off if you want and that's really what I'm I was doing. I'm gonna tell Milana to insert the clip of her falling that my oh. sister has of her in this video. It's honestly hilarious. It's golden, and the one of the instructors w- was like, "You should have taken a lesson." Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I definitely should have." I think if I take a lesson, I'll be really good. I actually, yeah. I got the snowboarding part. I just don't know how to stop. So in order to stop myself, I would just make myself fall. Mm-hmm. But I had no bruises or anything. I'm very proud of myself. I mean, it's snow. You should be fine. Yeah, but it was like bare. Mm. It was very bare there. Mm. There was like not. A do you ton know, of snow. was it real? Like was it real snow or do they have man made snow there? I think it was a combination. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think it was a combination because it wasn't fully it wasn't like enough yeah. It wasn't real enough. Snow. Yeah. So anyway, Utah was fun. I definitely go back. I definitely snowboard again. Um, and I think that's it for the trip. What else happened? I bought workout clothes from Gymshark and so I love Lululemon leggings because like they really suck you in the quality is good it lasts a long time um and they just fit me perfectly and if they don't when you go buy them in the store they can have them tailored for you like they'll have them cut and you can pick them up so that's what I usually have but they don't have sets and that's like so annoying to me like there's no matching set there's no sometimes even, they have sets a- they don't they just have colors that match and I asked them this they were like we don't have sets like if you you might find a gray sports bra with like the same kind of gray leggings but we don't have a well, set sometimes they come out with like limited edition like oh, designs maybe. that are like a matching sports bra and a yeah, matching may- legging yeah maybe that but like generally in the store they yeah, don't have like sets like their colors and stuff are yeah. not yeah yeah sets. so I was like well this is so annoying like I want a set. So I'm like, everyone's like, oh, try Gymshark. So I tried Gymshark. I got it on Black Friday, like a bunch of stuff. And they fit really well. It's not Lululemon, but they have sets and they're really cute. And I was surprised and I was very happy with my Gymshark. Did you get yours yet? Yeah, I picked it up today. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Oh, did you try it on? No, I hope it's good. You know what's interesting? I thought I would have to get my uh, leggings cut, like uh, tailored. No, they fit perfectly. Oh, that's good. Which is weird. It's just a different cut, probably. Yeah, like are they were they capris on someone else? No, but I'm sure people your size are short. <laughs> a small? They had a lot of size range. That's why, like they, like their size their uh, size range is wide, so huh. they probably like they match it to like a height too. Maybe it was great. I don't know. I'm very happy with them. You know what else? I my other favorite thing that I really buy. So I use this Kopari lip gloss. I think I've talked about it before. Lena has hers. I usually have five at a time in like weird places. I have one in my car. I have one in my workout bag, one in my purse, one right next to like my bed. And I think I lost one. I think I left one in Utah, whatever. This today I woke up and I was like, I have one. Like I started freaking out and I love them. And people are always complaining about like their lips being chapped or like what chapstick to use. I have not used chapstick in years because it doesn't fucking work. It actually makes my lips more chapped. Mm -hmm. Like what are they putting in there? Every time I put on chapstick. Yeah, the ingredients are like Yeah, so, and it's getting cold. So, I mean, I really, honestly, they should be paying me for this. But if you guys (laughs) are, your lips are chapped, I really recommend this Kopari lip gloss. It's a coconut base. Coconut, vitamin E, I think shea butter. It's it's vegan, non-GMO. It's all the goods and it does not make your lips chappy. It makes it like nice and glossy and hydrating. I'm wearing it right now. Look yeah, wait, I wear it on top are. of my lip mm-hmm. stuff. So 
I just wanted to share that with you guys in case anyone was looking for something. Or like a cute, oh, oh like a like a, a stocking stuffer. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not seeing When is your Christmas tree count going up? Oh, we're not doing one this year. Oh. Because of all of the lives lost, mm. the soldiers, and also um, both my grandmas. So it's that like. That makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a year of mourning. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, we talked about my ponytail. Here it is. Um, what else is there? Oh, there's two other things in behind the scenes that I want to talk about. Um, I'm on Hinge, the dating app. Uh, I really like it. I really encourage. Why are you rolling your eyes? Is something in your eye or are you? No, I'm rolling my eyes. Oh, that was very aggressive. Um, <laughs> it was like, she looked like Mary from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You would know if you watched it. Um, anyway, Mary. I'm gonna start calling you Mary. No, just that's talk the about that's it. the one that's married to her step grandfather. <laughs> just talk about Hinge. <laughs> so about Hinge, I haven't really been participating as much as I usually do. Like maybe I should be. I don't know. But they have this thing now where you can purchase a virtual rose and send it to someone. I have now have received five virtual roses from strangers. These are like four dollar roses. I haven't even responded to these people in like a regular high conversation. They're just out of the blue sending me a rose. And I just think it is like the funniest fucking thing. I don't know if Hinge came up with this because of like COVID and people are like less likely to meet up and give someone flowers. Like I don't know what this ordeal is, but like literally. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of fucking money because three of the guys, honestly four of them, I I didn't answer to any of them first of all, but three of them I don't think I would have answered like regardless. Like one of them perhaps, but like yeah. So yeah, it's a waste of money, but. I still recommend Hinge. Lena's not on any dating apps and she won't get on. I hate dating apps. I want to meet someone organically. You like and in, my sister. In the market. Always, you and my sister say the same thing. I want to meet somebody while I'm grocery shopping. First of all, that bitch doesn't grocery shop, okay? I do. You do. But like, what is the likelihood of you meeting your soulmate after you worked out with a mask on your face? Like at a grocery store. At Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. And that's the only place you go because of COVID. How are you supposed to meet somebody? I don't know. Or on a walk or just like What out. on a walk? What's on a walk? What walk? I don't know. Just naturally, organically. Yeah, but you're not going anywhere for this I mean, natural. So it's not going to happen right now. But it might not happen for a long time. I don't like forced interactions. I'm not going to go look at people's pictures and like swipe. You don't swipe on Hinge. That's Tinder. Okay. You scroll and you read about them. There's like a nice little write-up. I don't know what's wrong with people. I think Hinge is like a great place to be. I don't know if it's my Zodiac or my personality. It's not your Zodiac because I've met a couple of Leos on Hinge. Okay, bitch? (laughs) (laughs) One's very active, so... (laughs) Let's be clear, okay? <laughs> but I'm a moon in Pisces, so I'm a Pisces in Definitely moon. not your zodiac, because I met another one too, okay? Twas a lawyer, okay? <laughs> He's on there. <laughs> no, it's not your zodiac. I just think it's you. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities that you're skipping out on. Mm-hmm. This is this is a great place where you can set your height preferences. <laughs> like that's too much how is that too much you are a tall person i am a short person we have we both have some sort of disadvantage in this situation (laughs) where we have no i don't think you really she doesn't want to date anyone over six two i don't know why it matters because i look like a little child what does it matter and also it's hard to um is it you're small it's easy to move you around there's a lot of (laughs) you I don't know if the stereotype is real. <laughs> Not about the feet, but just like a bigger person, you know, would be bigger in other places. It's just a lot for little people. You know what I'm oh, okay. Yes, yes, That's yes. That's one problem. Okay, that makes the sense. The other problem is I feel like I have to wear heels all the time. And I know it's like just a me thing, but you look like a tiny little ant next to this like big person. Whatever. You look like their child. Like you go up to like under their nipple. <laughs> Like, hey, Nipple, how you doing? Like, I'm good down here, you know? And the person's just looking at you like this. So I have the ability to set my preferences, my age, my height, you know, your your age, your height. You can set that, too. You can even set religion if you want. You can even set, yes, alcohol, no alcohol, yes, yeah, weed, no mm, weed. No yes, alcohol. I'm a pill popper. No, I'm not a pill popper. Oh, Lord. Yeah. They should be. You know what there should be? Um, You know what should be on there? Yes, is- I want kids. No, I don't want kids. Do you attend therapy? Like, that's really important for me. Like, I need you Why? to... Why? 
I just want the person to like. I think that's be, weird. See, I already knew. You know you were why? You know why that. I think that's weird? There's why? a lot of people who don't need therapy or don't want to go to therapy because they don't feel like they need it. I don't need go to therapy. I, I mean, I could disagree. I don't think I need to go to therapy. I think everyone can benefit from therapy. Yeah, but why do they have to go to therapy? That they is, they that is uh, they don't expensive. Have to. That's your personal preference because I'm into like But that's very specific. And- People can be already have done therapy. People have yeah. could have been already... It doesn't no- need to be specifically that. It, like It's more so they're very they spend a lot of time on like their growth and But you can find that out in a conversation. Yeah. I don't know. What kind of conversation do we have with people? I'm not. I mean, th- you can after a while, but it, it's, it's very difficult for someone to do it on their own without seeking like an outside counsel. No, I'm talking about you can find out things about somebody like are they have they experienced growth? Are they healing or have they been healed through conversations with them? Yeah. Just like I want to know, like, how have you dealt with your trauma in life? That is a great question to yeah. ask someone who has messaged you on Hinge. Okay. I'll think about it. Think about it, okay? She's been on this train for a while. I'm just saying, I have a feeling she's going to get on Hinge and we're going to get matched with like the same guys and then oh, we're going to be God. fucking talking to the same... What happened to my sister? Oh, God. See, now my I'm like, not going to My sister was on Bumble or something. Well, I'm just like spilling all her beans and um, I hope she's not listening to this. And she met some guy, whatever, talked to him for a little bit. She vaguely told me like his name and like his profession and like one, one ear out the other. All of a sudden, I get a message from this guy and I'm like, God, this... This career and this name sounding familiar. And I'm like, oh my God. So I asked her and I, I asked her, like, is this him? She's like, yeah. So like he was on Bumble here, but also on Hinge. But he doesn't know we're sisters. It's not his fault. He's dating. It has nothing to do with do him. you have your real name on there? Yes. And does she have her real name on there? Yeah, but we're not. How would how would somebody last know we're name. sisters? Oh, no. I don't have my last name oh, on okay. there. No, 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 no. I wouldn't put my last name. I didn't even... I didn't even put the area that I live in. I put like a general yeah, LA like area because people yeah. are weird. Yeah. You know, okay. anyway, so. See, now that's another reason why we're going to have a weekly meetings about our. <laughs> what? About our um, dating app prospects to make well, sure they don't you, overlap. If you, you can get, no, I mean, your pre- height preference and mine are probably going to be different. So we're probably not going to. Like, what would you put as your height preference? As like a minimum yeah. or a maximum? Minimum. Six two. Oh, yeah, we might overlap because yeah. that's my maximum. <laughs> yeah, I already knew that. <laughs> yeah, I could put 6'4", whatever. It's going to narrow my pool. It's going to narrow your pool. <laughs> Maybe it'll be easier to you choose. You could do 6'3". Yeah, I'm 5'11". And a half. She's six feet tall. <laughs> this bitch be lying. Okay, I'm done. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm 5'11 and a half. You're six feet. No, I'm 5'11 and a half. Okay. Um, the last thing in BTS is this is probably the last couple of days that we'll be collecting donations for our Help the Homeless um, winter kits. And again, it's just a minimum $20. I mean, you can give anything you want, but a $20 donation will sponsor one kit, which includes blankets, gloves, um, beanies, a hygiene kit, hand sanitizers, masks, all kinds of stuff, snacks, water. Um, and you can send that to us, direct, to our company directly uh, through Venmo or Zelle or... What else? PayPal. PayPal, Cash, Cash App. App. We'll leave all the information in the episode notes. Um, but yeah, we're getting we're getting ready to do this probably the week of Christmas. Yeah, we raised two thousand dollars, which was like double what we intended. We were like, oh, we'll yeah. raise a thousand and we'll do like fifty kids. Mm-hmm. So we were able to raise, thankfully, two thousand dollars, and we we ordered for we actually 150. ordered for one fifty because yeah. we're also gonna donate. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So thank you all for donating. Where, yeah, hopefully we'll make this bigger and better every year. I know. This makes me really happy. Yeah, so thank you so much. And if you still want to donate, there is time. There is and time. And we're going um, I actually recorded, like, when we purchased everything on Amazon. So I'm going to post that to our Yeah. Um, and then we're going to we're gonna record when we have all the bags and you guys can yeah. see everything and take photos and stuff. At Noir Notebook. Yes. Exactly. Um, and that's it for BTS. Okay, so let's get into the talk worthy segment. Um, a lot of buffoonery going on in the media, but I want to start off with like the most ridiculous thing that I've been hearing. I guess it's not ridiculous to some, but it's kind of ridiculous to me. This whole like getting paid to take the vaccine ordeal is like beyond me. First, I started seeing my friend who kind of works in law and healthcare, and she was posting a poll. She said, Would you? Would you take the vaccine if the government paid you like $600 or something like that? Then I saw an article talking about $500. Then 
I saw this, okay? Uh, John Delaney of Maryland said the sooner, and I think he's he works in healthcare or he's, no, he is, um, I think he's a senator. Is he a senator? I don't know. Anyway, he said the sooner we get people vaccinated, the sooner we can get this country back to normal. He recommends um, an incentive for people to take the vaccine, and that incentive per his recommendation, is $1,500, a $1,500 check, like a stimulus check, to take the vaccine, which will run the country about $380 billion, um, assuming everybody gets the Yeah, I saw that article, too. He is a senator. He is a senator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, There was a poll, actually, that um, they the poll was taken on November 17th, in which 42% of Americans said that they wouldn't take the vaccine, even if the FDA approved it. Um... I don't know. This already rubs me the wrong way. Why do you have to take, like, why do you have to pay people to take a vaccine? If this is something that's supposed to be good for my health and beneficial for me, why are you paying me to take it? Like, the concept of paying someone to take a vaccine automatically turns me off because it makes me think that there is something wrong with the vaccine, which I already think. And now that's like confirming it. If you're going to pay me, look. I like money. Everyone does. You should be giving fucking people a stimulus check for the bullshit that we've been dealing through with this pandemic. We got a $1,200 check. We, that's ridiculous. We should be getting a $1,500 stimulus check. Not to fucking shove a vaccine up our throats, but because that's what we need to be getting. Like, other countries are paying that. But the fact that you are recommending to pay people to do it, to me, instantly, like, is a red flag. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to take that vaccine. Huh, a million dollars. A little shake it out. Okay. <laughs> No, it's no, it, this whole it is shady. It's, it's so shady. shady. And I just have like no words. Like I don't like we said this before. It's like there's so many different types of vaccines. Mm-hmm. Like what is it? Like how long has it been? I need a lot of info. Well, they take years to actually like tweak it. Like to get it right to like for you know, for a vaccine it needs to be tested is and this, researched for years. This is like this rushed. Is so this rushed. is like from March to De- assuming they started in March, yeah. December, it's nine months. And is like is this the same type of vaccine where they're putting the virus in you to build your immunity? Because no that's clue. what other va- some yeah. other vaccines yeah. are. I'm un- wanting to understand is that's not the case. Nobody knows here. anything is and they're the trying to pay here? me to like speed up the process no, and take I it. Won't do and it. Joe Biden said that he he said he vouches he will have a hundred million vaccines administered in the first hundred days of his presidency. Sometimes conspiracy theories are real. <laughs> okay. This might be one of them. I know I sound like a crazy lunatic, but I'm not taking a vaccine that I, has been around for nine months and I don't know anything about, okay? It's just not realistic for me. I don't want it. I don't want it. I would rather do a rapid test every time I have to walk into a grocery store or go into a mall or go to a concert than take a vaccine that is a premature vaccine that I don't know what it's going to do for my body because it hasn't even been tested longer than a year. A year. That's crazy. No, so, yeah, and if you're trying to pay me now, it's very what, way more questionable. Now I'm like side eyeing you. Why are you trying to pay, pay me to take that? Since when is the government trying to pay you to do anything like that, dude? This, these are gonna go out next week. You know that, right? Didn't yeah? Didn't you also say that healthcare workers mm-hmm. are gonna be the first? Well, I to- asked my mom because mm-hmm. my mom's a nurse, and I'm like, are they requiring you guys to take it? She's like, not this one, like not yet. Probably next year they will, mm. because a lot of people are like very iffy on it. But healthcare healthcare workers and um, um, people like in nursing homes, people that require care are going to be the first round of people. Long term, long term, yeah, long term care are going to be the first round of people who are required to take it. We're not even like you and I. We're probably like in tier three. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like Mm -hmm. that's like tier one. Then I'm sure like the elderly people. You know, tier two, maybe people who are like whose immunity is like compromised like that's yeah, I mean, you know we're the last we're, we're the young, last healthy, yeah healthy like thank god i mean i also i i don't know if we talked about this on the other episode but i saw something about like for flying that they were talking about like you having to have the vaccine yeah i saw that like in your passport or yeah. something again rapid test i will show up to the yeah. airport early like i don't give a fuck yeah they should offer that as an option. That's crazy. Of course. And some people like they they can't take like certain types of vaccines, like things in vaccines. They're like ingredients they can't put in. Well, their they body. have an out, so. They're, oh, they're, I mean, I have yeah. an out too. Then. Oh, you do. Um. Yeah, I'm one of those people. How do they know that? You have to prove it. Okay. You I'll have to get a doctor's note. I know some doctors. <laughs> we know some doctors. We'll get the note. <laughs> anyway, so that's one strange thing in the media. What else? Oh. <clears throat> 
So Time Magazine has announced their person of the year. And um, when I first saw the short list, like before the winners were announced, I was kind of like confused because it was Joe Biden. It said just Joe Biden, by the way, Trump, frontline healthcare workers and Dr. Fauci, and then the movement for racial um, justice. So that was those were the uh, nominees. And then I was like, Trump, like Trump's not hasn't had a great year. Like people were not really happy with him. So I'm like, how was he nominated for a Time Person of the Year? But I did a little more research and I found out that Time nominates based on who influenced the year's events the most, whether it was like positive or negative. So that kind of makes sense why he would be nominated. Um, and when I first saw this list, I was like, uh, I mean, I guess like either the frontline workers or like you know the um, <clears throat> the movement for racial uh, injustice was probably what I would recommend. But then when they announced that Joe Biden and is it Kamala or Kamala? I think it's Kamala. Kamala Harris won. That made more sense to me because like Joe Biden, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, an older white man who is the president of the U S which is like a story we've heard a million times. Um, most influential, I can't really say, but Kamala Harris, absolutely. First, female vice president, first black vice president, first uh, South Asian vice president. So like, yes, most influential, sure. Like if we're, if we're talking about a duo, yes, I initially didn't see that. that oh, was so the, it was, it. they were, yes, they were a duo. Yes, exactly. So they won. Made sense. I actually have a tweet on my phone that like, I didn't read, but what do you mean, like do you I mean? didn't click on it. Oh. I didn't read the actual article, but it says, 11 today at 11 a.m breaking trump has filed an emergency law oh i think it's a joke to oh. overturn the results of the time magazine person of the year after losing to joe Biden. yeah the people's comments were like, like there here comes trump time magazine is is rigged even though i won the first time and now this time it's rigged it's like just like fraud. the election yeah exactly <laughs> actually as i was reading it i was like oh this is a joke my bad <laughs> That's funny though. Yeah, but he's probably laying there in bed, like looking up the ceiling, like this. What can I do today to fuck everyone? Up? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so that's crazy. And something else I read. Um, I saw this article on Vice uh, that said California legislator Reggie Jones Sawyer proposed a drastic plan to help create a more responsible, less deadly police force for his state, requiring all incoming local and state officers to have a bachelor's degree or be at least twenty five years old. That's interesting. He said that this data-driven bill relies on years of study and new understandings of brain development to ensure that only those officers capable of high-level decision-making and judgment-intense situations are entrusted with working in our communities and correctional facilities. So, like, I understand. I, I understand having a college degree, like, sure, like, that should be maybe a requirement to be a police officer. I don't know for your degree. Okay. But... I was confused about being 25 at first because a lot of people go from high school when they're 18 years old and they, you know, maybe wait a year or two or they enter right away. Um, and that's like a seven year gap. But I get it. Like your brain development like and life experience, like you are like a little fucking 20 year old snot walking around with a gun and like you mm -hmm. have no life experience really. And like you feel empowered and powerful and all this kind of shit. So I get the 25 age thing like I understand where he's coming from but by the way I know some fucking 30 year olds that are dickheads so I don't really know you know I mean I'm not debatable. I didn't hear about this I'm not mad at it because I do think like just overall the like police need reform yeah um, like the police department needs in some to, way yeah, yeah needs reform I would um, remember I shared a podcast with Milana where um there's like they're putting together different tasks for us like mm -hmm. yeah like first responders to go out to like nonviolent um like nonviolent crimes first yeah. before actual like police officers Show where they like don't have yeah. guns and stuff, which I I like that as well. I mean, I do the brain development portion makes sense to me too in general in terms yeah. of like in terms of age and then also in terms of like getting an I, like this is how I think about the college degree aspect of it, like getting an education, but it's also like furthering your education as well. But it's also the experience and the, like, yeah. the diversity of going to college and just like being around and different people, types of yeah. people. I mean, if anything, they should like if like you're really going to do the college thing, then you should have people study to become like 
a police officer well, in yeah. terms of like like diversity training and yeah. like emergency crisis situations and different ways to respond yeah. which is like training they can put into the actual police force itself but if you're gonna do the like yeah they should like like basically reform the police academy yeah that's so there's some statistics that i found from the chicago sun Sun times because i was like will it really make people better police officers like if they go to college you know i mean automatically i would think yes but like has there been studies and there there has research shows that overall college educated officers generate fewer citizen complaints they are Mm -hmm. also terminated less frequently for misconduct and less likely to use force um regarding the use of force officers who've graduated from college are almost 40 percent less likely to use any form of force that is a fucking huge number um and then college educated officers are also less likely to shoot their guns. A study of officer involved shootings from 1990 to 2004, 14 years, found that college educated police officers were almost 30% less likely to fire their weapons in the line of duty. Hmm. That's really good. Yeah. Um, actually, I think the police in England don't carry like any arms. I think they have like a special department if need be, but most police officers there don't. And it's not just England. It's a couple of countries actually. Um, but there's something interesting. So I was thinking about this. I'm like, there's gotta be like some sort of like a rebuttal or something to this. Right. So I was like doing some research and I found this, um, Eric Manis from Sacramento Sheriff department. And actually this is what I thought about instantly when I saw 25 years old, years old or college. Cause I was like, some people want to be cops, but don't have the, ability to go to college right um and he basically said the same thing we have not taken any official position on the bill but we worry that this approach would derail recruitment efforts of military veterans um i actually have a friend who went to the marines he was 18 and now he's a police officer and he's like he's 25 now but he's a poli- been police officer since he was 22 but his brain development and his training is much more advanced because he had he went to the marines right but if this bill existed, he wouldn't be able to be a police officer because he was 23 years old when he became a police officer. Um, so anyway, he's saying that it would derail rec- recruitment efforts of military veterans under the age of 25 and of those from disadvantaged and underrepresented communities who may not have every opportunity to get a bachelor's degree prior to seeking a career in law enforcement. Um, increased targeted education through the academy setting would be more of a meaningful mm-hmm. approach, which, uh, is, yeah. which is the first thing they should do. But if like, if you can't, it's going to be hard to manage that. Like putting into law, like you need to have a four year degree is much easier than trying to figure out how every department in California is going to across the board, do some sort of like proper training or put in the proper classes or require their own, you know, cause right now you don't, you all you need is a GED to be a cop. And like, what is it? It was like six months worth of training. Is that what we yeah. read? Like nothing to carry a gun. So it's like, I need the same amount to do hair. How? I mean, I was going to say for the bill, they could put in like exceptions for like, you know what I mean? They can put in exceptions for people who've been in the military but yeah. for that aspect. But I do. Or at least a two year education, like at least yeah. an associate's degree and like community colleges put like rec- have that like as a major or like a minor or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I hear what he's saying in terms of like going into like reforming the police mm-hmm. academy, which I think should be the long term goal. But you're right. It's like a huge project that. And it's and it's going to be per city and like per state. It's yeah. not something they can do across like all of the United yeah. States. So like you can I mean, it's better to start small, but they should also like simultaneously be looking into that. Like, I do think that that's more important. That's yeah, like, I think they're trying to solve a problem quickly. Yeah, like a short term yeah. solution, like the police yeah. reform. I mean, the academy is like a long term solution. Yeah, like, do exactly. that simultaneously. Yeah, true. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting piece of uh, news. Let's see what else. So, huh. Um, I think the FTC is suing Facebook, if I read that right. But according to CNN, dozens of states and the federal government, yeah, sued Facebook on Wednesday in twin antitrust lawsuits, alleging that the social media giant has abused its dominance in the digital marketplace and engaged in anti-competitive behavior. Um, <laughs> so I can't help but laugh because, like, fucking Facebook is just a shit show. So, like, uh, I... I have nothing to say really about like I'm not mad at this lawsuit because no I'll it's actually it. kind of interesting and it, the thing that I think is interesting about it is that like as a regular citizen that kind of like goes unnoticed like yeah. now that I think about it like Milana was telling me about it the other day and I mean I know Facebook has acquired Instagram WhatsApp 
probably um, other shit we don't even know yeah. about or think about. Exactly. So I'm like, I know that they've made all these acquisitions and I know there are antitrust laws basically that it's like they don't want, like there should be no monopoly in one marketplace. And it's like Facebook is a monopoly in the digital media marketplace. So I know all that, but I totally kind of like forgot about it. And I was like, wow, I mean, at least like some people are paying attention and it's like, no, this is like too much. I mean, and it, and it does mean something because like Mark Zuckerberg makes very like strong stances on a lot of like yes topics like in terms of like when it came to trump and um fake news on facebook and stuff yeah. like that and or also and a big giving, problem in the election yeah and, and now giving, owning instagram and giving away like uh, user information yes. and data um and stuff like that so so this, that stuff is in here too yeah so it's but it's not like that like among other things obviously but one of the things that they are asking is that they're requiring the company to divest assets including instagram and whatsapp um and here they there's this quote here personal social networking is central to the lives of millions of americans um facebook's actions to entrench and maintain its monopoly deny customers the benefits of competition our aim is to roll back facebook's anti-competitive conduct and restore competition so that innovation and free competition can thrive and in facebook's defense like in their case government officials will need to prove in court that the company's alleged misconduct led to real world measurable harms to co- consumers or competition yeah i feel I they have harmed me. I do. I feel like fucking Instagram's a shopping mall. I said this last time. They have ruined Instagram for me. The other day This is not what they're talking about though. It's harm. The other day I went this is not what they're talking about. The other day I was scrolling like yesterday, I was like, let me just see what Instagram's about nowadays. I found like an option on Instagram where they have saved every single thing that you have clicked on, like a shopping thing. Like you mean ads. liked photos? No, ads. Oh. I just randomly stumbled upon it on my profile. And I was like, this is really a shopping mall. And like, it looks like Facebook now. And I don't know how to use Facebook anymore. I couldn't even find my photo albums the other day. Oh. I don't know how to use it. And this is the same thing with Instagram. It used to be so simple. And now I'm just like a fucking grandma. And by the way, it's true. What are the three biggest social media platforms? Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, right? Maybe YouTube is. Oh, yes. YouTube too. You're right. Four. They own, he owns Facebook and Instagram, which I think arguably are probably top two. Maybe with YouTube somewhere there too. But top two. YouTube probably might be one because of Google, but it's a different kind of thing. I'm talking about like people personally like writing their statuses, news constantly being thrown at you. That's Facebook. That's Instagram and that's Twitter. But they own Instagram and Facebook. So now this content that they're putting on Facebook that you said he's taking a stance on certain things, it's going to trickle down to Instagram slowly. And by the way, I notice with their algorithm, if I post a photo or something, it does pretty well. When I posted my help the homeless flyer, I got 25 likes. That is bizarre. They yeah. don't promote certain things. Yeah, for sure. And it's just weird. Like Instagram is becoming a very strange place and I just think like I understand why this lawsuit is in place. No, this is a really interesting lawsuit to mm-hmm. follow. Like I'm going to like keep up with it because I want to see like what the government is going to yeah. come and like prove and say that has like harmed Americans and is like a monopoly basically. I remember Google being in something like this a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, but their argument was that they are basically like, you know, taking away from all other search engines. Nobody, Google didn't do anything. Nobody is using any other search engines. They're not forcing anyone to do it. Obviously, like Facebook and Instagram aren't either. But they're not, it, you literally will not go and go to yahoo.com to search like how to spell this or how to say this or where is this. You just don't. It's like not their fault that everyone is using that. They're not doing anything in particular, I think, to... Get rid of the competition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to... Yeah, and something else I was going to say was uh, when you were mentioning about, um, like, to have an open marketplace with competition to breed, like, innovation, I like, the first thing I thought of is all these other, like, smaller platforms that kind of, like, came and went, like Vine Mm -hmm. and Snapchat. Even, like, Snapchat was very big and it, you know, kind of got lost in the wind and Mm -hmm. then... um, He should have sold when he had the opportunity. Yeah, and then... um, (laughs) What was the uh, what was the other one that uh, oh well I mean TikTok TikTok was well, he trying to buy TikTok 
No, I was just Or Instagram. Gonna, so who's trying to buy TikTok? I don't know. But basically how like Trump was like, oh, I'm going to ban TikTok. So yeah. like TikTok had like their own set of problems yeah. and stuff. So it is true that like it, they are th- taking over a mm-hmm. monopoly and a lot of other. I mean, Twitter is like the only standing like platform yes. that's anywhere near them. And the and they're very far. Like yeah. the, the degree between like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Twitter are very far. But yeah. they are like, to, in my opinion, like the second biggest yeah. social media platform. So um, it's just interesting because it's true. Like all these other smaller mm-hmm. social media platforms have either like failed or they come and they go. Like if you don't sell to us, then we're yeah, just like, kind of we're weird when you fuck think you about up. it. Like when I, you really he s- tried, I bet you he tried to buy Snapchat. I mean, do you he, think? I feel like he either tried to buy Snapchat. I thought somewhat some other bigger like company. I remember was, was trying Instagram to buy. trying to buy Snapchat, but he is Instagram now. He bought Instagram in two thousand and like twelve or something for like a billion dollars, mm-hmm. which is nothing. I no, know nothing. I'm really interested about acquisitions and stuff. It's like, when is it good to sell? Like, is it in your best? And like, I wonder if the and if you don't sell the right time to go buy your competition. Yeah, but also like, if the owner of Instagram like didn't sell, I wonder would he have been he or she? I don't know who owned it before. More profitable. I don't. I'm interested in like, is it? I do. I think that 2012 was the. Do you remember 2012? I was in college. And you were using Instagram, but you were using it. I just it. started, I just using, started it, yeah. using it, but I was using it to like edit pictures. I didn't even know that you can post photos. Like 2012, I was posting. I think 2011 or 10. When did he buy it? When? 2012. I don't. Are you sure? Yeah, that's, I think that's what it said. And 2012, we were using it actively because I remember me and my boo were on there. But when it came out like 2010, I wasn't posting on there. I was using it to, for the filters. Like I would edit my pictures, save it, yeah. and then upload it on Facebook. Yeah, I think it was 2012. Are we checking? Oh, yeah, you're right. 2012, you bought wow. it, right? Wow. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated because we're both very curious about this lawsuit and what's going to happen with it. Um, and then the last thing... Oh, yeah. Thing- Sorry, I'm still on oh, this. Okay, go ahead. It says CEO Evan Spiegel famously turned down a $3 billion offer from Facebook to, buy, them, you. to buy the then two-year-old Snapchat in 2013. So what did what did this fucker do, Mark Zuckerberg? He it's, went and he bought, he's, I can't post this on Instagram because he's going to ban me from it, but he's going to like block this whole video, but he might delete my Instagram. Um, oh my God, please don't. Um, he went and he was like, oh, oh, you don't want to sell Snapchat to me? Okay. He went and bought Instagram for less money. No, he had Instagram before. Oh, he already had it? Yeah, because this is in 2013. Oh, so he, so he tried to buy both? Yeah, he's trying. And he, he was going to buy both and make them compete. Oh my God, he needs to be sued this man. He is being sued. He, he was trying to buy both of the... Oh my God. Look, I wouldn't even be mad if if they if they, he had to sell Instagram. To oh, someone. and sorry, we're we're going on and on about this. I'm like on a deep hole on, <laughs> on the okay. internet. So... It says, um, I, so some of the questions on Google is like, does Facebook own TikTok? And then on Wednesday, Facebook owned Instagram launched Reels. It's TikTok clone in the United States. Like even like I did remember, we talked about this when Reels came out. It's like, this is literally just TikTok. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like he is literally doing what they're like saying. Yeah, without, yes, he's ruining the competition the, without even buying the but other. the point, yeah. like if we're speaking like about this from like a legal perspective, like you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So it's yeah. like, he's basically making it hard for them. He's like, okay, yeah, I did do all of this. I do buy these companies. I do make copycats yeah. of this and that. Cause he copied, um, he tried to copy and he failed, but, um, Snapchat filters, like mm-hmm. he like changed the filters to be more similar to Snapchat yeah. type filters. But he's basically saying, well, you have to prove that this is like harming Americans. Well, it's harming people who own companies like TikTok yes, or yes. like Snapchat. I, I don't know if he means though, like regular yeah. citizens. Maybe. Maybe if they can prove that he's selling information. Yeah, then that's or like at like yeah, more so the shopping and yeah. ads type thing, and the information is maybe where they'll get. Him. Yeah, but yeah, that's look. Crazy. We all love capitalism, but I think there's a point, and I think that systems and like uh, departments are set in place for these kinds of things because otherwise there would we already there is already a ninety nine and a one, but it would be a very very small like one, like it would be like people who controlled everything, it would be like one conglomerate. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it. there is a reason why I things mean, like this are I mean, we see that place. in like media. Like if you really look at News it, there's News stations. Like, yeah, there's yeah. like t- mm-hmm. three or four like big media companies and they own, own all everything. the other media yeah. companies. All like, the radio stations. Yeah. They own like, yeah, yeah everything. They own like the stadiums, like mm-hmm. everything. It's crazy. It, yeah, if you look into it, it's, it's 
It's a lot. Anyway, so that will keep you guys updated. The last thing I want to talk about is something that I found so interesting. If you guys haven't watched this, I would either... No, don't pause my podcast. Keep watching or listening. Just go, like, listen or watch it after. It's the Olivia Jade interview uh, with the Red Table Talk. Um, I was surprised to see her on there. I didn't... I couldn't ever imagine that she would go on Red Table Talk. You have to have some balls to go there um, and to explain to everyone what happened because this is her first interview since everything has happened. Um, anyway, first of all... I just kind of forgot about it and <laughs> forgot about her. So in a way, I didn't expect her on there because I'm like, oh. But I'm you, like, because, you know, I realized she couldn't talk about yeah, it she said that. until they the finally... Case, yeah. yeah, the case was well, over. the case was going on, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I didn't realize last week when we were talking about Felicity Huffman that... Lori Laughlin and Massimo, I think is his name is. Is that her her husband's name? I don't know his name. The husband, her parents. I didn't know that they were already sentenced and serving their, their jail sentence. That shit was on hush hush. Like I didn't see that anywhere in the media. But um, if you guys don't remember, Lori Laughlin, Aunt Becky, and her husband, they paid about this college counselor about five hundred thousand dollars for both of the daughters uh to somehow make it into usc and she laughlin was ordered to pay a hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine and do 100 hours of community service and spend two years on supervised release um and spend i think two months in in jail prison while her husband was ordered to pay a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine do 250 hours of community service and spend two years on supervised release and i think he's serving a six month prison sentence um and they both went in so the girls are by themselves but they're of age so they're fine um let me just do a quick recap of the interview so olivia jade is the one that called and requested to be on the show um and adrian norris aka gammy she didn't want her on the show um she said that she feels like there's a white why is a white woman coming to three black women for a redemp for her redemption story she called it white privilege uh jada said that she thinks it's best practice it's best to practice you know compassion um she also said that she didn't want to do the same thing that white women did to her which was stereotype her or put her in a category or a box so she said she didn't want to do that with olivia jade and just like you know stereotype her and say like she's a white privileged woman so you know and kind of like give her that title and so she didn't want to do that because that's been done to her um Olivia Jade basically said that she knows she messed up. She doesn't want pity. She felt embarrassed. She felt ashamed. Um, a huge part of having privilege, this was important when she said this, a huge part of having privilege is not knowing that you have privilege. And that's what she learned from this also. Um, she also said that she didn't know that they did anything wrong because in her community and in her circle of friends, this was very normal. Like it was normal to have a college counselor who helped you get into a school. And it was very normal for parents to donate to the school in some sort of way so she didn't understand that what they were doing was wrong because in her world this was something that was normal it's not very clear if she exactly knew what like she did or what her parents did I don't know how much she knew because she said that she wrote her college admissions letter or essay and when all of the information started coming out and she saw like what she wrote in her college admissions. I say it wasn't the one that she submitted. So she said that she, it came off as if she didn't really know how involved or what this man really did. Now, I don't remember the extent of their, like what they did to get into school. I think, I think I remember vaguely that there were some sort of photos of her in like a rowing Mm -hmm. uniform yeah so i don't know if that was photoshop or she really took that because the college counselor recommended it to the parents so i don't I'm know i'm just confused like why is she apologizing if she says she didn't know like if you're gonna come to red table talk she's like apologizing for her ignorance she's not apologizing she's like i'm sorry like i just feel like i she so she's apologizing on apologizing on the behalf of her parents and for the fact that she didn't know yeah she's not apologizing on behalf. she's there like for herself so she, she's apologizing about being ignorant? She, yeah, she's like, I'm sorry. Like, I lived in a world that I, like, I wasn't exposed to everything else. And I just feel like I was so ignorant for so long. Like, I, and I think, so here's some of the, th the things that, you know, were here. My thoughts. So, um, I always try to look at people's intentions. You know, you have to, like, for Adrian Norris to say she didn't want her there, 
um, you know, it came off a little judgy to me. I, none of us are in a position to judge people. I think we always have to offer grace because it couldn't be any of us in a position where we are now being apologetic. And I think that I look at everyone's intention. I don't think what she did, how much she knew, didn't know, was malicious. Like, her intent was never malicious. And I think her parents' intent was never malicious. They were just trying to do what they thought was best for their kids, where in reality, if you really sit and think about it, getting your paying to get your kids into school is not what's best for the kids. Like, teaching them hard work and, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. what's best for them. I don't think they had malicious intent. So for that reason, I can offer grace and forgiveness. Like, she's not apologizing to me and looking to me for that, but I understand that. So I'm coming from an understanding place. Um, I think one of the things that she said that was important is that she made a mistake. People make mistakes all the time. People make some fucking horrible decisions, and it's not on display for the whole world to see. Her entire mistake was on display she has a whole life ahead of her she's 21 years old she has to move forward like and people need to understand that this is a young girl or a family like her and her sister who made a decision and a bad mistake and it was on display for everyone else so like okay that happened what can I do now to move forward I think like what I kind of want to add is like I don't mm -hmm. I'm like on the side of Gammy like it's not I don't think I think what she's trying to say is is not not give her grace, not give her a platform, like not to let her apologize. It's like, why did you choose? She's questioning why she chose this specific platform. And I have the same question. It, it's just a little weird to me. And it's mm -hmm. a little suspect to me that she wanted this specific platform. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't match to me. Like you all of a sudden, you wanting to come on Red Table Talk, in my opinion, is the epitome of white privilege that you think that you can just come on Red Table Talk and talk about this problem uh -huh. and you requesting to be on it like of course like you can tell like Jada and her spiritual journey and the place that she's in of course yeah. was like gonna let her be on it and I also think it's like political and um, like about money and making the show like have like get ratings as well like I think that's a, a key in the decision of why Jada like let mm -hmm. her on but it like I think for I think this is the interesting point is that Jada and her mother have two different like visions for what the show yeah. is and all the other like people that were on are like um are like minority people and topics that are not um given a lot of attention and given a lot of platform and controversial topics um that need to be discussed to see like both sides. Like yeah. for example, like this is not an important topic, but it's an example of the controversy is when uh, Jordan Woods went on it mm -hmm. and it's like about how to treat like how to treat uh, women how to treat black women who gets ostracized who gets blamed yeah the di like there was a lot to like dive into there like this was kind of like you could have gone on Good Morning America and apologize well like, I think why she did that and to me I mean I might be wrong but this is a more of a millennial talk show this is a show that her group of friends or our age group would watch it's also on a social media platform yeah which i think not is on all television this is all relating to who she is which i think is all her, for her self-interest that's why i think it's not genuine i don't i don't necessarily think i think that she was genuinely apologetic yeah, I don't, she was genuinely her apologetic, going to but it was for her like you you mentioned before like it's her pr person probably of recommended course, which yeah. makes it less genuine to me i mean no you have to go somewhere she has to do a public apology somewhere because the situation was public like if you are going to live in a mistake or something happens and it's public i think you need to address it publicly yeah and she could have gone to a major cable yeah. network news she network. could have gone any yes but that's not where like her audiences or people who give a fuck about her are like exactly. they, that's where people who care about her parents are like her mom might do an interview with good morning america or something like that but that's not where her audience is that's not I who she needs to talk to so for me this actually made the most sense like cable makes, television does not make sense to me at all for her or her age group like her options were probably something like this or someone's podcast to she be honest could have with done you. to me something more genuine like posted a video on her youtube channel it doesn't like, have the same impact i know which yeah. is why the goal for this was for her it wasn't for, yeah i mean she has to apologize yeah. and live move forward i mean i just course. understand her like the 
Uh, but that wasn't her argument. Her argument wasn't like, why necessarily, why are you here seeking? So she was saying like, I don't give a fuck about like you and your like apology because you're going to be fine in life, which I 100% yeah, agree with. Yeah, but she also has a point. This happened. This didn't happen. This girl was going to be fine regardless. Like you are a white woman in America. You're pr- pretty. You lost your endorsements. You got fucked for a while. You're going to be fine. Like your parents have enough money for you to be fine for a very long time. And I get that. But it's not necessarily always about that. It's like you're reputation and like what you want to do in life like her life got flipped upside down she was in college and she was on youtube and in one day yeah and I would, it was all gone and I so she had to, to do see. some self-reflection and she said she has been she's been volunteering she's been doing this she's in in on this show we don't know only time will tell how much of it is real how much of it is long lasting and how much of it is like oh fuck i gotta do some things to like get my name up there we yeah, don't know i would love to see what she does with Me the too. rest of her life and Me if too. she uses this to propel herself yeah she said she's like i watch my youtube videos back and i'm embarrassed she's like i can't believe how unaware and stupid i was to say like i'm going to college and i don't really care about school i'm going to party that's privilege you know she's very aware now she's like people i'm going to like i don't even give a fuck about the classes i'm going to party like she was very clear on like i think she did a lot of self-reflection like she now was like oh shit like wow, we're privileged and we're stupid. Like, I'm stupid. And that's good. But like, yes, you are doing things now. All we have is time. Like, we'll see what happens from this point on. Yeah, I mean, she could. She can use this to yeah. like, clear her name and then be her same self or she can use that platform and change who she is and do some good in the world. Yes, it's exactly. Two options. So hopefully it's all good because... What did... I didn't watch it. What did Willow say? Willow didn't say much. She said she was somewhere in the middle between her mom and her. Okay. Um, I think that Jada was right. She was like, you know, people always say like when Willow was going through her problems, I don't really know what they were, but when Willow was going through whatever she was going through, people were like, oh, you're, you're well... It has nothing to do with race. You're wealthy. You'll be fine. Um, like trying to throw money at the at the situation, and as a parent, she can under, as a parent who has the, the the means, she can understand how people or will desperately just do anything to help their kids if they have the means to. She understood that, and I also understand it. Um, but I would have just handled it a but different way. My question way. is like, if you have so much resource and money, why do you feel the need to overcompensate and do these extra things for your kids when you when they have almost the options of anything? Because they really wanted them to go to college. Yeah, it's just like a, yeah, yeah. That's and yeah. the dad didn't want them to leave the state, so they were like, "You have to go to USC. How are we gonna figure this out?" Or somewhere in California, and like maybe they didn't get. It. I don't know the whole story. Yeah, I mean, the more you talk about it, the yeah. more self interested it is. Like, yeah, I mean, of course. Like, I don't think this girl ever wanted to go to college. She was already thriving on YouTube. You think she wanted to go to college? Yeah, it's just interesting because the point is like what the parents wanted and what the child wanted is different. So then the parents who had resource, opportunity, connections, network overcompensated on something that a lot of regular U.S. like citizens or people. Yes. And I think it's interesting. Apply to college to get in and that's what their like trajectory of life is. Get into college, get a job and they're like paying to get there like 10 minutes into the interview we talked a lot about race and i kept thinking to myself i'm like this isn't about race to me like i understand white privilege is like one thing like you're white you already have one foot in the door i get that but this wasn't about race to me this was about wealth and like and and that type of privilege and i think like 10 15 minutes into the interview i think gammy said that she's like oh no it was at the end she was like by the way that's not about ra- necessarily race it's you you and like your privilege with wealth you have the money like we can talk about poor or like people who don't have a lot of like the um, the lower class white Americans who want to go to college and don't have the means to like it's not just about race like age and you know what I'm saying like it's not necessarily a race thing it's about just people people who have the money and abuse abuse that I, mean, I think abuse race their power. is a factor because they in a way to, yes yeah because they have to like colleges will have to fill a diversity quota and once they like hit that they're not going to accept any more african-american students but we're so talking like, about the reverse we're talking about white so it's like they're th- that's not necessarily so like, but she took the place of the whole point where people were upset is because she took the place of a of a, could have been a minority student it could have been a white student it could it doesn't have been. matter it's, yeah. it could have been anybody she took us to the place of somebody yeah. who could have been in that and school of course people are but gonna, because of money yeah. you you know what i mean and the easiest thing to say because we associate white privilege a lot of the time with money we do that's very true and so saying that like we say oh you have white privilege because you're wealthy and because you're white like yes that's like a double thing and 
I thought we, I think we saw a lot of that in, our, in the interview, but yes, it is just, I think it's more about having the money and just being like, yeah, yeah and then irresponsible pe- and just like unaware and like not consciously thinking when you don't have to because you have the funds and the means to do whatever you want, you know? Yeah, so. and people who are a minority, they're going to look at it through their lens exactly. and their perspective. Yeah. And I, like I said, I think it is a factor. It's not the main focal yeah. point, but it plays a part in it. It does. And, I mean, it's good that, you know, that she apologized and admitted her mistake. But. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. All we have is. It would have been time. like interesting to see like if they came as a family and apologized. Like the fact that she did it well, alone. Well, they're in prison. Was, well, when they came out. <laughs> like, so yeah. um, they're in prison. Um, I think, I, th- I think that she needs to do this by herself yeah it's she was like a pub she, she it was her and her mom who were really the public figures mm-hmm. in this family so like she needs her mom got fired from all her shit so like she this girl's like i need to figure out my career now because like this my life was not what i thought it was going to be so and i don't know what her sister's doing i think her sister was really in school like trying to be a student yeah i think her sister <laughs> she was, was like in her normal. sophomore year yeah, normal normal quote unquote, unquote. Yeah. yeah it's crazy so i don't know what can you imagine like what school is going to take her now yeah, I mean, she's going to have to do something similar, like try to separate herself from the whole thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. And neither of her par- parents went to college. That was another reason she was oh saying they God, wanted us. So- they wanted us so badly to go to college. because neither therapy them did. is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> I'm serious. They're putting their insecurities on their children. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, that's it for Togworthy. I think that was a lot. Yeah, we're over an hour. Oh, God. You guys have no idea how hard it is to edit the video and the audio when it's over an hour. But anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, Lena won't stop talking. So here we go, guys. We're going to get into the Dropping Gems segment. Um, the topic for this week is a little bit, uh, I don't know, out of the norm. I want to talk about fighting, like violence, like girl fight or like, you know, like a brawl. <laughs> like jumping. I want to talk about fighting. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because I've had this on my list for a while, but these two, I was watching Real Housewives of Potomac and, um, there's, there's a whole thing happening on there when two of the castmates got into a fight. Um, one of them really launched at the other and it was, it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, it was a pretty bad fight, and I that one, and then there was one a couple of years ago um, at Real Housewives of Atlanta during a reunion when one of the housewives got dragged by her hair across the stage. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, like, in between. Like, some people are kind of like, everyone on the show always acts like, I can't believe you're fighting. Like, we, this is not what we do. We don't behave this way. Um, and this is all the other women that are not, like, you know, in, in it. And then the housewife that, like, fought the other one always has to sit, put out some apology talking about, you know, uh, I'm so sorry. You know, just save her ass and be on the show. This is not like me or this was a really bad situation and blah, 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 blah. When in reality, they probably would have done the same thing again if they had to do it. And this is why. I am somewhere in the gray area when it comes to fighting. Um, Personally, I don't like violence. I don't like to see people fight. I won't fight. I've been in one fight, and I'll talk about that later. But um, I think that we have to be a little more understanding in situations because sometimes when people fight, they are being heavily provoked, okay? And... I think that, for example, the situation with Housewives of Potomac, Candace, I'm not saying she deserved it, and I don't think anyone deserves to be have their ass beat or like be like just be abused by anyone, right? And this is very serious. I don't want anyone to put their fucking hands on me. So I have I, I have empathy for her, right? But you have to not you have to you have to think about your mm, behavior in the situation. What did you do to add to this? And I say that because both of the situations on Housewives, these two women were heavily provoking. For example, Real Housewives of Atlanta, during the reunion, Kenya Moore sitting next to Portia, she's sticking a wand in her face. No, And Portia's like, you need to stop doing that. Get the fucking wand out of my face. She's like, no, I'm the queen. I'm the queen. I'm, wh- what would you do? What would you do in a situation? What did Portia do? She grabbed the wand and grabbed Kenya. And by the way, Kenya talks a lot of shit. 
all the time. She's very, she provokes people. This is what happened with Candace. Candace used to say the most reckless shit. Let's not forget that last season, Candace, or two seasons ago, pulled a butter knife on one of the other housewives. Now, she didn't do anything with it, but she did. We're talking about people who are heavily provoking you. And if you are somebody who maybe hasn't had therapy and you haven't dealt with all of your issues and you are constantly triggered by, like somebody is constantly triggering you all the time, provoking you, you're going to snap one day. And I'm not saying that it is right that it happened, that Candace, you know, that Monique uh, assaulted her or that Portia assaulted Kenya. I'm not saying that it is right, but I have, I'm have. i saying that we have to understand why things happen. There's always a gray area. If somebody is putting something in your face five, six, seven times over, if somebody is talking shit for years saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Someone's going to do something about it one day. And we have to be mindful of our behavior in these altercations as well, right? Now, with that being said, um, my thoughts on fights, and it's always been like this, is you can say whatever you want to me, right? Um, oh, by the way, the whole sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me is bullshit. I think that if you if somebody hits you or you get into a fight, that is a temporary moment that'll go away. This is just my personal opinion. Words can hurt and they can stay with you forever. So I actually don't believe in that phrase. But... Anyway, back to fights. I've, I've thought this my whole life. You can say whatever you want to me because I am a, a person who is or tries to be self-composed. You know, I always have this mindset of like, never let them see you sweat. Like, don't let people get the best of you. So you can talk shit to me about me. Do whatever you want for as long as you want. I'm not going to do anything. But the second you touch me, now we've crossed a line, right? And that's kind of what happened. And the one time that I've been in a fight, somebody was talking shit to me for maybe like 20 minutes. And I was like, you know what? I'm not about to fight you, girl. Like, you're weird. Like, I'm not going to fight you. Because I don't want to fight anybody. I don't want to be in a fight. And I think it's stupid. However, when you touch me, it's different. This person touched my forehead at, at 20 minutes of talking shit, like pushed my head back. And then, and then there was a fight. But anyway, I'm saying all of this to say that if you are in a situation where you, where you are being provoked and somebody is constantly going at you, it is very difficult to re remain and maintain your composure, right? However, I just want to remind people that it is, you win if you don't react. When people, when you react in that way, in a violent way, when you assault somebody, when you, whatever, go back and forth with them, you are the, you have now lost. They have now got what they wanted out of you, which was a reaction. So it's always better to either walk away because once you walk away and you sit in silence, you really think about it. It was just, it's way better for your health, for whatever, to just not avoid the situation. My motto in life is never let them see you sweat. Don't let people get the best of you. You should always walk away being the bigger person because it's easier to sleep at night. And once you let people get to you in that way, you've already lost and they already have an upper hand on you. I don't know. That's I'm talking in my like petty, I have a ponytail in my hair, real housewives kind of way. But that's really what I think in general, that I think that if somebody hasn't physically touched you and they are provoking you, the best thing you can do to be the bigger person and to walk away from the situation is literally just to just walk away. Don't react because the second you react, they've already got you. And that's what people want. That's it. You ever been in a fight, Lena? No, I haven't. I mean, I've gotten like in little tussles with my sister when I was younger, but that's about it. Is your sister strong? I feel like she's strong. Yeah, she's strong. Yeah. And she used to say like, you don't want to fight me. Oh, <laughs> and you're probably like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, no, we didn't like yeah, we maybe like had a little fight like once or twice when we were growing up. But yeah. um, I was just going to say, yeah, I was listening to a podcast that was talking about because I think a lot of what you're saying is about when somebody's like triggered. Yes. Whether it's like from a verbal mm -hmm. altercation and then like leading to physical. And I read something that was really interesting is that it's hard. Like you may do all this work in like therapy or anger mm -hmm. management or whatever the case may be or like, um, yeah, have like a life coach or study and read books on your own but when you're triggered I listened to this podcast and it was like so key it's a 
um, it's a physical reaction yes. that takes over a mental reaction. So, so you're no longer, you can study for like 10 years and like read books and mm-hmm. do all of like the work on yourself. But when you're triggered by something and you're always, I mean, you're going to have like trigger points or things that will always be sensitive to you. Um, yeah. I, I don't believe that there's a way to completely ever like remove certain things. You just have to know how to like manage them better. And so when you're triggered, it's a physical body reaction and it overtakes like your mind. So yeah. like everything that you've learned is kind of like not helping you in this moment. And so like kind of what you were saying, I was going to say, I think the best thing to do is like walk away, like, like, and I'm talking about which, what you were saying is exit the room, the situation, the house, the restaurant, whatever the case may be, because they say that it takes at least 20 minutes for like your brain levels mm. to like regulate and to, and it's basically, it's, it sounds very basic, but it's, they literally say just to breathe, like take deep breaths yeah. and like slowly breathe and it will take your body 20 minutes to like regulate. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was really interesting because like the best way to do that is to like leave the situation right. and like breathe. And it's not like five minutes and come back or it's not like 10 minutes. Like they really say minimum 20 minutes for you to really be able to like collect yourself and then make like a rational like That's interesting de- decision. Yeah. So um, it was really interesting. So I was saying, I think that's like the best thing to do is to like walk away yeah. and yeah, you don't want people, you don't want people to bring you down to their level. I'm like all about like, I'm like is standing your ground and like holding, like doing what you would be comfortable with and what you would be proud mm-hmm. of yourself to do. And obviously there's moments where you're going to like miss the mark, yeah. but always try to carry yourself in a way that you can walk away and be proud of. Cause like a lot of the times, like you're saying, like people regret the decisions they make yeah. and kind of like that I mean I have my thing with like housewives where it's like it could potentially like be like scripted or like planned no they she 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 filed a lawsuit against her oh my god that's they don't scary. do that on the show this isn't Jerry Springer or like why one would of these... they fight on camera like that why wouldn't they because just like girl control? these are real problems oh my god housewives is real it's not scripted the environment is like scripted because it's produced like we're all coming at this time this day here are the lights but it is not a scripted show and People so you're really they hate don't each ever other. Do like fights to like? Bring, no, to there's only been like the two, ratings. No, there's been two fights for in thirteen seasons of eight of these things wow. across the board, and actually, I, I'm saying all this to say because as I'm watching, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I'm watching Real Housewives of Potomac, and I do not like the way that the other women ostracized Monique for this fight. They stopped inviting her to places. They said that they will not film if she's in the scenes. Basically, they wanted her fired for this fight. Mm. Like, it was just a lot, right? We barely saw her on the season. Uh, They wouldn't talk to her. It was automatically, like, they just judged her. It was so much. And I'm like, this other girl can't even see her like what she, like her the prop like what she caused in yeah, this whole thing. She doesn't course. see her. She has never admitted to anything. And... I don't like the way that these women treated her because I think that it doesn't come from a place of like forgiveness. This woman is like, you know, she obviously made a mistake. She was clearly triggered. She blacked out in this Mm -hmm. fight and she said it. You can see it. When you're watching, you're like, oh, she blacked out. Like it's very, very, very clear. And I think I don't like that the way that they, they treated her. And this is why... I say that there's always a gray area when it comes to fighting. You know, I think we're always like, oh, like, you fight like oh my god like you just judge people instantly like oh you fought her like what the fuck like have some class or whatever people think but there's a gray area and like one yeah you're being provoked too triggered like that's a good point like it is very much like and i think kind mental. of kind of what you're saying is it sounds like i don't i'm not watching mm-hmm. these shows but i'm like trying to visualize it when you're saying i feel like a lot of these women i hear like after whether it's on these shows or just from other experiences they're like i've never fought before yeah. this has never happened to me like basically because like of the environment exactly yeah. like that this is not something that they would normally do because yeah. they are blacking out and this is like a physical body yeah. reaction and i think that's taking over them and i think that they you should yeah like forgive people and have grace like you were saying in the in the other segment that not not to never talk to yeah. somebody because they made a mistake and made a bad decision and exactly l- like gave into a provoking and triggering situation yeah. so I mean, and obviously they, I, I feel like I've also heard them say like, oh, they apologize. Like you were saying, she yeah. apologized. Um, and it shows that this is not something they stand for or they're proud of, yeah. but they admit that they made a mistake and they're, 
hopefully doing whatever nobody they can wants to, to be on camera yeah. when they have kids fighting it's or like at all at I mean, all like I think nobody very, yeah nobody's trying to fight like i like my face i don't want anyone to hit it yeah, and i vice think a versa. small percentage of people like enjoy yes. fighting and that's a whole other like that's a whole different ball yeah game, which is the person that like picked a fight with me like clearly loved issues, fight. yeah but, it's like you're weird but anyway yeah i'm gonna i'll try to find that podcast and yeah like, you that's can, really like, good link it. it was really interesting i was like wow this is like i mean it's always comes down to like breathing and like slowing things down yes like slowing down exactly. yeah and i try to like as i've like gotten older and like gone to different um like workshops and seminars and stuff like that for like mental health and like self um self-development is that is one key thing is to like walk away from the situation like you yes, were saying that's so important yeah like even if i'm like just disagreeing with someone whether it's like in my house it could be like my parents yeah. it's like okay we're not like seeing eye to eye right now and yeah. we're not like communicating in the best way so i'm going and i literally say and i try to be respectful like i'm gonna leave like yeah because like we're not get being productive in this conversation yeah. and like we can come back to this conversation and you'll always be happier that you walked away yeah in the long run. And then like you can you go back. be mad and like go yeah. on a walk by yourself and... And you'll get over it. Yeah. And just Everything talk to yourself and get yes. out your energy. Exactly. So that's that. So those, are, are, those are our tips if you ever those get... Those are, tr- are yeah. tips if you get triggered. That's the name of If you get triggered or segment. yeah, you're about to fight somebody, just walk away. Um, that's all I have for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. As a reminder, there is a visual to this, youtube.com forward slash starring Milana. Make sure to subscribe, um, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you're listening on Apple or other podcast audio apps, make sure to leave a rating and a review and subscribe to this podcast. Follow me at starring Milana. Follow Lena at Lena Noral Dean and at Noir Notebook Productions. Oh, just at Noir Notebook. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's our production company. And that's also where we'll be posting updates on our Help the Homeless winter kits um and again everything will be in the episode notes so you guys should if you have the ability to uh donate a and sponsor a homeless kit that's it thank you bye bye